All right, so here is the issue that I've been tackling um, recently, past couple days. This is, uh, check this out, if I just play this video here, this is a recording of the shadow issue that you can see right there. It's flickering the player's shadow. Um, and it's what's happening is basically the uh, the sky bot is updating its animation almost every single tick because it's floating and so almost every one of those animation frames it's moved its position and it has to rethink its model and height and positioning and then redraw all its voxels what causes to happen is anything that's beneath it has to be repainted so that um it can be drawn correctly if perhaps the skybot moved like only one pixel up there's still like a little bit of stuff beneath it that needs to be redrawn right so to be uh, just to be thorough there's like you know all the everything is repainted and um, that's within that it's it's bounding box that it's the skybots render bounding box and um, so that's so the issue is that that's what that's what's happening that the player's shadow is not being repainted because it's not actually part of the model at least in this video right so let's see that again basically the issue is just it, it flickering that shadow because it's only re, it's only repainting the um, the players uh, voxels um, every so often compared to the skybot so let's go ahead and look at the fixed version here oh this is old code shoot yeah, this is old code. Let's get the latest code. Let's try that again. Okay, so now I'm standing here. The same kind of thing is happening. You can see here's this is uh, actually showing the the uh, the render bounding boxes, right? Let's get this. Uh, So every time he just every time the the skybot roll, rolls around and causes a repaint for the male idol for the the player, um, it actually repaints the shadow um, using the existing shadow it already painted. So the render system is actually faster now too. You can tell it is because right now it's using less than 100 milliseconds. Before it was using like 160, 180. So it's it's a faster render system and it's it's rendering a lot more accurately. So let's take a look at the code behind this. This is kind of a, a pretty complex um, piece of machinery. Well, not it's not too complex. It's just it took a it took a while to implement. But let's take a look at what what all was involved with that. The first step um, was separating the solid voxel rendering from transparent rendering. Let's go ahead and look at animate 3D. That's kind of a good way to illustrate this point. Um, before. What was happening is every time a, a um, an entity was actually painted, here we go. Here's one of them. It would paint all of the solid voxels, all of the transparent voxels, and cast any shadows all at once. But but uh, what needs to happen is it needs to cast shadows at the very end because you need to wait for all of the solid voxels to get inside the buffer before you can cast voxels. So. If an entity was on top of another entity, like for example, the ground entities are almost always on the bottom, and the player entity is almost always on the top. So the ground entities, when they're uh, when they're repainted, um, well, kind of lost my lost my train of thought there. Um, when the ground entities are repainted, it it well are painted at all, they're gonna get overpainted by the solid voxels of the player and that's all in voxel basically there's a depth buffer that's happening uh, the depth buffer let's go to the paint method here the depth buffer checks if it if it's if the voxel is deeper and doesn't paint if it is so that way um, you can draw the a piece of ground and the player and have them in either order and have them be correct right so if the if the player was drawn first and then the ground voxels were drawn after it and there wasn't this this depth buffer check right here it would draw the ground on top of the player 
So that's why we need this depth buffer. And that's exactly why we need to separate out the rendering of, or the casting of shadows and the drawing of transparent voxels um, from the painting of solid voxels. So this paints the solid voxels, this paints the transparent voxels, and they're now, it's a much more organized system too. And there's one more benefit to this whole thing. It's a, there's a memory savings and a huge efficiency savings because before I was using two giant grounds buffers that cover the entire battlegrounds. Um, and when a transparent voxel was rendered, it would use the second grounds buffer. And then when it would go and update the buffer and send it to the screen, it would copy, it would use this copy me method that would actually uh, memset. Let's look at this copy data method. First, it would memset or mem copy the uh, pixels, the voxels into the the screen buffer and then it would add I would uh, I wrote this function called mem add which basically just goes and adds together two pieces of memory um, so it, this was a lot slower it would have to it would have to mem add everything that was on the screen from the transparent voxels into the solid voxels so now it's a lot more efficient it doesn't have to use this overlay at all um, it can just use this regular text grounds to do a one mems, mem copy rather than a mem copy and a mem add. Um, so that was the basis of the solution. And then I had to go and repaint using the paint model because um, now the render component when it paints, um, it actually, you know, when it paints transparency, it will cast shadows. And when the cast shadows, it goes and modifies the paint model or whatever model is passed right here. It modifies the model to include those new voxels. Let's look at that in apply shadow in voxel. Um, basically, it's going and and whenever it's applying a shadow to a certain voxel, it goes and uh, sets it up. But this is the real this is the real key here is it pushes back into that model the new voxel for the shadow. So basically, when a shadow is being cast, it's saving a copy of that shadow that was cast into the model that was passed. <laughs> um, and then it tends to voxel. So that this, this saving it into the, the paint model allows it to, um, re, to whenever it's repainting, um, this is a, it detects that it's basically a shadowed um, voxel because the shadowed voxels don't have an X, a Y, or a Z. They only have an X 2D, Y 2D, Z 2D, and a color. So it knows that this is this is repainting a shadow right here, and all it does is just go and tints the voxel just like it did when it first cast the shadow. So that's that's really the the core of it. That's how the programming works behind that. And um, gosh, I'm just I'm, I'm I feel magical that this actually worked. <laughs> So thanks for watching this video. That's it for now.